Hello mortals. What is everything made of? You, as I assume, consist of bones, muscles, and giant jelly beans. If you're not an apple fan, you may even have a second kidney. Your organs are subsequently made of molecules, which consist of atoms, then of electrons, protons, and neutrons, while the latter are made up of quarks. That is the microscopic level. At the scale of stars though, the universe is ruled by gravity bending space-time itself, seemingly ignoring whatever happens at the very small scale. And yet how are these worlds connected? Are they even related at all? And most importantly, does it even matter? Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. First, to clear things up. Quantum mechanics is the field of study in physics that describes the most fundamental building blocks of the world and how they interact between each other. A bad summary of it would be that scientists came up with some mind-boggling math describing the subatomic reactions, which says that particles are never in a concrete place in space, but rather exist as a cloud of probability that describes how likely a particle is to be at that specific location in the cloud. Until the position is measured, the particle kind of exists in all those places at the same time. Using the observations from inside the Hadron Collider, physicists came up with the standard model, the set of particles that describe almost everything that there is in the universe. But what makes an electron from the core of a star from Andromeda be the identical copy of the electron that was used to charge your phone yesterday? Moreover, how do you incorporate Einstein's special relativity in all this mess, which is known to not be on good terms with the quantum world. Here's where the quantum field theory comes in, which brings even more spooky mathematics into physics and describes every particle as a perturbation of a corresponding field. The electron is simply a perturbation in the electron field, the photon in the photon field, and so on for every fundamental particle. Then there also are these random fluctuations of virtual particles popping in and out the existence inside these fields without a seeming cause. Overall, this overly complex system provides a somewhat realistic model for the microscopic world and predicts with accurate certainty the results of subatomic interactions. That is, until you bring this stupid gravity in the equation and everything breaks. But what exactly is gravity? Is it another fundamental force of the universe? Maybe. But our lovely Einstein decided not to be like your usual 20th century scientist and thought of gravity as the warping of the fabric of space and time itself under the presence of matter, similar to all the trampoline analogies you will find on the internet. Massive objects bend space around themselves, and the bent space tells other objects how to move around through it. To complicate things, let's bring the speed of light in the equation. As you know, the speed of light is a constant in our universe, and it represents the maximum speed allowed, which can only be reached by massless objects like photons. By definition, the speed of an object is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time it used to travel. Light moves at the same speed regardless of circumstance. That means that a beam of light running through flat space is moving at the same speed as a beam of light traveling through curved space. Even though the second photon must travel a longer distance, if we look from the perspective of the first photon, in order to maintain the light speed constant, time itself will bend in order to run faster at the curvature, so that the same ratio between distance and time is maintained. The problem arises when you try to combine the quantum field theory with general relativity. There currently are no calculations that would combine them, as when you do, you trip into infinities. And you already know from a previous video that infinites in nature mean that our math is broken. It's also hard to work with any fields at all when the space-time itself is bending like crazy. Thus, there is a need of a unifying theory, that of quantum gravity. There are two main candidates for this quantum theory, loop quantum gravity and the M-theory. Reality is often not what it seems. Were humans not to evolve such a level of intelligence, we would have never been able to find out what lies at the fabric of space-time. That's why, as this month's recommended read by Skynet we have the book, Reality is Not What It Seems, by Carlo Rovelli, which offers a quick overview of the long journey modern science has taken from the cosmic observations of ancient Greece to the heady theories of quantum mechanics. And in cooperation with our today's sponsor, Blinkist, you get access to the key ideas of the book and its summarized version which you can listen to or read in under 10 minutes. Aside from this, you'll get access to thousands of other educational titles and 27 categories of the world's best knowledge to choose from. Try and make a goal of allocating 15 minutes of listening to a title every day, and a couple of months in, you could brag about having studied the key ideas of over a hundred books. 
Show me someone who wouldn't be impressed by that. This is a great opportunity to broaden your knowledge and get new perspectives on the world without having to spend hours on searching and researching, it's all there ready for you now. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Hurry up. Back to the video. Loop quantum theory tries to squish general relativity into field theory by quantizing it, that is, defining a smallest possible length and duration of time. Basically, they looked at how gluons, the particles responsible for how the strong force communicates, behave in computer models based on the principles of quantum mechanics. What they saw is that sometimes the strong interaction circles around making these self-sustained loops of force. Then they asked themselves, what if gravity could also replicate this behavior and make a particle that would characterize space itself? That particle would be the graviton, the one to describe gravity. Not as a force, but rather as curvatures in the fabric of space-time. This graviton would be the quanta of space, the smallest length, area, and volume you could ever get. And why can't you just divide it in even smaller bits, you might ask. It's because the graviton is not something in space, it is space itself. It would be the fundamental fabric of space-time. By quantizing space itself, this model permits simulations of models that avoid infinities and other similar problems. But what if we give up on the idea of incorporating one theory into another? What if we take a blank page and start all over? And here comes the M-theory, which actually is just a Trojan horse of all the string theories there are. The main idea is, of course, that every particle is made of strings. Some of these strings are open, other are closed, and all of them can vibrate in different ways. Depending on how they vibrate, they can describe a certain particle, and thus describe the entire standard model. But more than that, it can also describe the particle that is responsible for gravitational interactions, once again the graviton. In both models we arrive at the introduction of a new particle, but they resolve the same problem differently. Loop quantum gravity eliminates the issue of infinities by transforming space and time in discrete building blocks. In M-theory, because all particles are vibrating strings, the reactions that happen between them are actually continuous, and not instantaneous, a feature that also eliminates infinity from the equations. The problem with any string theory is, however, that each one of them is very difficult to test experimentally, as the strings would be incredibly tiny. Besides that, the M-theory requires that the universe has 11 dimensions, compared to the three we're used to excluding time. More on that in this video. As with loop quantum gravity, the problem is fairly similar. The quanta of space are so small, that there are no and there will be no tools or ways to check the plausibility of these theories. It's simply physically impossible to observe such a small scale. But so far, the model proved itself useful in making calculations and correct predictions of reactions in the quantum world. But what could these two theories potentially give us if they were to be proven correct? They could give us an answer to everything, quite literally. If we find a way to connect quantum mechanics and general relativity, we will be very close to the theory of everything, a framework which links every physical aspect of the universe. What's dark matter? Answered. How does quantum entanglement work? No problem. Why didn't they reciprocate your feelings? Check the mirror. While loop quantum gravity only tries to combine the quantum world and gravity, leaving the other questions for another time, M-theory is going all in and tries to touch upon every aspect of physics. One of them could be the solution to our problem. Or maybe it would be a combination of these two, or maybe none of them at all. Maybe a brand new theory will arise that consists of hundreds of dimensions and eldritch horrors and quantum nuggets. Regardless, the future of physics seems very exciting, as we only seem to have scrapped the surface of understanding reality so far.